12.30, I'm going to get started, and I want to introduce our speakers here in a minute. First, I want to welcome you to our Soft Armor Solutions webinar. This is the sixth, I believe, webinar in our series, maybe seventh. I guess we're up to our seventh now. That's pretty exciting. I am Bill Murphy. I'm your host. I am the civil engineer for ASP Quick Supply in Bowman. And for those of you who have not joined us, I'm going to go through just a few basics. I have turned off the chat here on this Zoom webinar. The chat feature is off. That doesn't mean you can ask questions. You can ask questions with the Q&A feature. If you're not familiar with that, look around there on the menus and scroll around with your mouse till you get to the outside of your screen. You should see Q&A. You can type those in and I will get those. We'll try to answer those during this webinar and see if we can get to some of them at the end when we have some time left. If not, we're gonna capture all the questions on the Q&A and we'll do a written response to all of those questions. And when we send out your PDH certificate, after you complete a simple survey monkey at the end of this webinar, that survey monkey is simply gonna ask you for your name, email address, and city. And we'll put two questions on there. One will be regarding projects. Do you have particular projects that come to mind during this presentation that you'd like our help with? And the other would be getting feedback on the webinar series, some content perhaps that you haven't participated in or that you haven't seen us present yet and you'd like us to cover. Uh, we are blessed with a lot of great contacts. I'll get into that when I talk about what we do. So use that Q&A feature instead of the chat. And to get started here on our presentation, I am screen sharing and I have a, the presentations loaded on my computer. You'll hear me hand off the controls to our presenters as I introduce them. If we run into any glitches, we just work through it. Um, we've done a number of these and it's gone fairly well. So once again, I'm representing ASP Enterprises, Quick Supply Company, and Bowman Construction Supply. Most of you are located in one of those eight states shown on the map. If not, you're still friends and partners of ours. We actually get to answer a lot of questions from around the country, and we're blessed to partner with manufacturers and representatives from around the world. We do have a number of CPESs on staff who are erosion and sediment control experts. I am our licensed professional engineer, but we do not offer engineering services um, you know, as, as a stamped sign plans consultant. Instead, I advise other engineers, landscape architects, and even contractors on their projects. We have a number of sales professionals who are all experts in their field, and we have over 9,000 customers. I need to update this slide. And most of our locations have a significantly sized warehouse and a fleet of trucks and drivers. Our warehouses and truck drivers have been very busy through this COVID pandemic. While we have been doing social distancing and keeping our offices locked, we are taking orders over the phone and internet, and we are fulfilling a lot of orders. As you all know, the construction industry was deemed essential, and we've stayed very busy, and we've had near record-breaking uh, months of March, April, and May, and we're still going strong in June. Uh, we are logistics ex experts. We bring in products from hundreds of different manufacturers from around the world. We stock those either in our warehouse or our very large yards, and we get those out to you, and we can mix and match and custom deliver whatever you need. And we've been blessed with um, good weather, really. Even though we've had a lot of rain, it, we've, it's been followed by a lot of dry days. We've had some really ridiculous weather here lately with the tropical storm that came up. But I see the sun shining outside the office I'm in now. I happen to be in Quick Supply Company's office in Des Moines, Iowa. And um, I think that I hear our trucks going. You're going to hear the noise in the background if I keep talking. As the engineer, I don't help with our commodities as often as I do our engineered solutions. And that could be stormwater solutions, our water quality solutions, our vegetated solutions. But um, these are just some of the manufacturers we work with. You'll see right above our Quick Supply ASP Bowman logo, InstaTurf. That will be one of the products featured today. That'll be our second speaker, uh, Tim Lancaster. And I'll give Tim's bio um, when we hand it over to him as we're handing off the controls. But first, I'm going to open up with Mark Sternemann from ASP Enterprises. For those of you that were with us a few weeks ago, Mark already gave one presentation and he is bold enough to give another one for our company. Other than uh, myself and Don Tiemann, uh, Mark is probably our most eager presenter, and he might not want me to say that. So Mark, if you wanna unmute yourself, the next slide will be yours. I'm gonna go ahead and do an introduction. Mark Sternemann has worked for ASP Enterprises in our Fenton, Missouri office, which is St. Louis, uh, for 12 years. He serves the St. Louis area and Southeast Missouri. He's a member and enjoys participating in numerous organizations with engineers and contractors. Mark enjoys long walks on job sites and hiking up and down creeks looking at erosion. Kids, his kids do not like hearing stories about all the erosion he sees, and mine do not either. So, Mark, if you unmute yourself, are you on with us? Yep, I'm here. That's excellent. So I'm still sharing with you. I'm going to try to hand the remote controls to you, 
and you'll see a little thing pop up on your screen now. You click yep. at the center of the screen and you will be driving the bus. I got it. Thanks, I buddy. think you, you may have overused the word eager presenter, but uh, <laughs> I laughed when I said it. Yeah, I'm happy to do it and happy to talk about it. Hopefully I don't fail miserably. And my part today is probably a lot less involved than my part a couple of weeks ago with the Geo 101. So I'm going to try and kind of, this is going to be a lot more about InstaTurf and Tim's product and a little bit about kind of the products that led Tim to where he got. So these are still soft armor solutions. It's, you know, start very quickly over the bottom of the scale and move up the scale ultimately to the top of the scale with Tim's product. So I wanted to start with a little bit of <clears throat> terminology in the beginning. So probably everyone has heard about erosion control blanket. Uh, we love acronyms like a lot of industries do. So we call it ECB. Um, today we'll talk more about turf reinforcement mats, another acronym, TRM and a little bit about HPTRM. Um, in our world, when we talk about erosion control blanket, we're basically just saying a temporary blanket. So everything from uh, inexpensive single net straw blanket to 100% coconut um, with a longer life expectancy, but still temporary. Like the coconut will ultimately go away. The, um, the characteristics of the temporary blanket are that, that plastic netting that probably everyone has seen, some people don't like. And sandwiched between that is a layer of straw, layer of straw coconut, layer of coconut, 100% coconut. Some, there's some Curlex blankets with wood fibers, but they're all temporary is the important thing that I wanna get across. This is a picture of a Metrolink job from years ago. It was, uh, a big job with a lot of straw blanket that worked great. These are a few of the, the brand names. So we sell a lot of North American green, Western green now. And S75 is single net straw blanket. S150 is double net straw blanket. Those are, those are our brand names, but there's generically we talk about single net straw blanket, double net straw blanket, straw coconut blanket. And the life expectancy is, is the good part. The 100% coconut up to 36 months. And one other variation of it and replacing that plastic netting with uh, what we call BioNet, 100% uh, biodegradable. Those plastic nettings are what we call photodegradable. So the UV light will break them down and that's how they go away. Um, the BioNet is uh, a premium product. It's a better product. It works a little bit better. Uh, it's better for wildlife. And in my opinion, the best part about it is you don't see that plastic netting puffing up getting ready to go away. Sometimes the plastic netting can be an eyesore and the jute netting will probably never be an eyesore. So there's a few different government agencies or, or governing bodies that really like BioNet and it's a great product. So that's the short and sweet over the temporary erosion control blanket. Now we'll switch in to turf reinforcement mats or TRMs. Uh, Western Green has their line, they, they brand VMAX. Some of the reasons to use the TRMs, and, and most of the time we talk about TRMs replacing rock, and just as often it's not necessarily replacing rock, but doing a better version than erosion control blanket. So erosion, you know, maybe well-established turf could handle erosion, and then something changes. There's more development upstream, and the quantity of water is is increased, and now that swale that was vegetated can't handle it as well. You might not need to go all the way to rock. You can go just one step up to a turf reinforcement mat. Uh, quite often they're less expensive than placing rock, significantly less intrusive than getting dump trucks and big machinery to place rock. Um, more environmentally friendly, they'll filter the water better. Uh, they don't heat the water up. Can hopefully recharge the groundwater. Uh, some of the other, they can be safer. You know, if it's a roadside swale and I'm, if you ever ran your car off a road into a riprap swale, it's probably very unpleasant. And if you have to do it, I'd rather go into a grass line swale. So the, the main three that we sell, this is what we stock the most of. You probably saw some pictures of 
that Bill had up there in the beginning. The SC250, C350, P550, again, they're brand names for those particular products. They're the ones that we promote the most. Uh, it's what we inventory the most. There's definitely other ones out there and some that we, we still sell, but this is what we talk about the most. The, you know, we're, I don't think anyone was reaching too far when they named them. The SC, straw coconut. The C is coconut and the P is polypropylene. As far as I know, the straw coconut and the coconut are the only products that are a composite TRM. So they have permanent function and they have that natural property to help germination and retain moisture. Um, let's see if I can find that button. The SC250 is the first one. It's kind of the, the least expensive of the three. It happens to be my favorite. I think it vegetates the best. The mixture of strong coconut allows for, for new grass to grow up through it really well. It disappears the quickest, has 24 month life expectancy. And uh, it, it has fixed a ton of stuff and a ton of that things. It's kind of, it's my go-to thing when I get phone calls from people with erosion problems. It starts there and we move up. You can see in the pictures on the right-hand side, the, uh, it's got a top net, bottom net, and a center corrugated net. And then just to brush up for this, I actually got the spec sheet out and read it, which I probably haven't read in a while. The spec sheet calls out dramatically corrugated crimped intermediate netting, which sounds like maybe a, a marketing person got a hold of that one. But uh, they're heavy duty nets that are made to stay there for the duration. That's the permanent component to it is that top, bottom, and middle net. The straw coconut will go away after grass's vegetation has been established. This is a photo of a job at Fort Leonard Wood in Missouri, actually. And uh, it's a big, big stormwater channel that starts off to the left and runs down this way on the other side of that berm is, is a settling basin. And one of the things I like about this picture is that on the top of the berm and the kind of the right hand side of the picture, it transitions from SC250, which is the darker looking stuff, to straw blanket. It's an easy transition and it's a good one because at the top they, they didn't rationalize needing that extra protection because a TRM obviously costs more than a straw blanket. So, you know, use, use the one product where you need it and you need that protection. And when you don't need that level of protection anymore, you can easily transition back to a less expensive product. So then you go up one step to a C350, 100% coconut. Everything's basically the same. The top net and the bottom net are a little bit heavier duty than they are in the SC250. The center net stays the same, still dramatically crimped. And the life expectancy goes out. The coconut will stay there for 36 months rather than 24 months. So maybe if it's a job that has some native plants that take longer to germinate or if it's an area that you're concerned about shade or something like that and getting vegetation established. The coconut does offer a little bit, a little bit more uh, erosion protection. The shear stress goes up a little bit. Um, they're pretty similar, SC250 and C350. And to be honest, I, I kind of default to the SC250 because of that better vegetation. But when you need it, that one's there. This is a project we did. It's actually a big reinforced slope. So this whole slope got excavated away uh, and rebuilt with uh, reinforced, it's a reinforced vegetated slope ultimately. Got brought back in an 18 inch lift with GeoGrid in it. And uh, C350 is the protection on the face for this creek. Like all of our creeks and all of our markets, this creek is flashy. Didn't used to be flashy, and now it is. So it comes up, it goes down really quickly. And uh, I did my best to take pictures from the exact same spot, but it was a really long walk to get to where this was. So um, it's probably like a jungle now. And then you get, the high end of this scale on the TRMs, at least in this scope of it, is the 100% synthetic, the polypropylene. So the, the erosion value goes up. SC250 maxed out at like 10 pounds of shear stress, fully vegetated, where P550 will max out at like 14 pounds of shear stress. So it just brings better, better erosion controllability 
the top and bottom net are all the heaviest duty nets that they offer, still dramatically crimp center netting. And all components of it are meant to stay there throughout to reinforce the grass and the roots. Uh, another flashy creek that needed a, a this, before this was fixed, it was it had terrible erosion on all sides of it. Um, we planted, I don't know that you can see very well on the top right picture, those were uh, plugs that got planted through it. And in the bottom, they vegetated really well. And the seed underneath of it vegetated really well. I go look at this creek almost every time it rains because it's in kind of not far from our office and in, in a, a part of town that's easy to get to. I can stop on a bridge and look right at it. So when dirt's not moving and it's raining out, when you sell construction supplies, you got to look for things to do. And I like looking at creeks. And uh, so this one, this one is one of our better projects that it's worked wonderful on and, and really fixed a, a hard spot. So the HPTRM is something kind of, uh, I guess, newer in our, it's been around a long time, but it's newer than the products we talked about previously. And these are, you can tell from the picture, it's a TRM with these percussion anchors that are meant to hold it down. This got a lot more popular, I would say, after Hurricane Katrina in Louisiana as a way of fixing the levees. Uh, this particular TRM has a really high tensile strength, so it can handle lawnmowers on top of it, the weight of a tractor mowing, or a boat that might run into it, or a huge tree coming down a river that won't tear it. And then also offers some reinforcement by driving the anchor so far into the ground and pulling back on them. This would be if, if this is something intriguing to you guys, this could be its own hour-long lunch presentation that you can reach out for. Um, we have wonderful vendors that help with this too. And it, it's a really good solution that uh, it's an engineered solution. So it's not the kind of thing that just ends up on plans without having conversations usually. And there's a few alternative TRM, some of the stuff that we sell don't necessarily inventory as much. That bottom longer picture was, it's the main one. Uh, Pyramat is a name you know. PP5 Extreme might be a name you know. Um, the, some of the pictures towards the top, that black one that's really open, that's an Incomat TRM. We use that one in conjunction with uh, Hydromulch or Flexterra a lot, where you can spray hydro, you can anchor that one with anchor trenches and big fabric pins holding it down, and then spray mulch straight into it. It's a really great solution um, on a very steep slope that might be hard to, uh, to get something to stay on. And then uh, maybe that top left picture is probably a more traditional looking one, a, a less expensive TRM that is 100% synthetic, doesn't have the 3D crimped netting, so it's probably the commodity TRM that is, uh, you know, basically when it all comes down to price, that's the kind of product that is out there. Some of the ways to anchor these, I'm sure a lot of people think how, you know, we mostly live in this six inch U-shaped sod staple, the third from the right one. This is still the product that gets used to hold these down the most. Uh, in more critical applications or, um, an eight inch sod staple brings a lot more value. Sometimes we supplement with these, uh, we call them fabric pins or washer pins on here. Those work really well. Uh, something, the, the twist pins on the left hand side are a little bit newer. Uh, they're more labor intensive to install, but they have really good, um, they hold material down really, really well. And one of the biggest problems we have with all these products is not getting stapled in enough. There's a joke amongst contractors and everyone that the quantity of staples goes down as the temperature goes up throughout the day. And every one of these products has a, a recommended staple pattern. And it's probably one of the biggest challenges we have getting them installed with the appropriate amount of staples. So this, the, the anchor pattern is important. Inspectors that check on jobs is important to make sure they're stapling things down. And it's one of the main reasons if something didn't work is because they didn't use enough of them. And just a couple slides on how to install it. It can basically be installed parallel to a flow, perpendicular to a flow. Um, the joints are obviously important to, to anchor really well. Uh, anchor trenches are important. We need to try our best to keep water from getting underneath the product. That's one of the, the weakest parts is if 
you know, if, if you just flop it up at the top of the slope and all the water that's running down can immediately get underneath of it, it's not going to do its job. Keeping water on top of the TRM or erosion control blanket for that matter is, is important. All these details are on websites too. We can share these with you. You can go get them if you want. Our website has links to all of them. That's a good mention, Mark. I'll, I'll remind them at the end of this as well. Um, and this is your last slide before we introduce Tim. So if there's other stuff you want to add, go ahead and finish up on this slide. Yeah, that's the gist of it. Hopefully I just intrigued you a little bit about TRMs or maybe cleared up some terminology questions about TRMs. You know, I, don't, I know that the level of presentation is not, I didn't, didn't solve any of the world's problems with it, but if you come across projects and you're thinking that TRM is, is a, a good solution or could be a solution, I would reach out to your local ASP quick supply Bowman salesman. All of our, you know, I don't know near as much about stormwater as Bill does, but I could probably hang with him on TRMs. So it's one of the products that all of our sales force is very knowledgeable about. Um, it's, uh, yeah, I would, I would reach out to the local guys and get them involved and help because they got samples of everything and they got probably local projects they could point you in the direction of. And that's really about it. I think we should switch to Tim and let him take off. Okay. With his and I'll introduce Tim. I'm taking, I'm going to hand him the controls here. Um, Mark, I, I'll go you one better. I think I consider you and our local sales guys better experts on erosion control blankets, turf reinforcement mats, and vegetated solutions more than me because you guys know each of your markets better than me. Not just which products you have readily available in your warehouse and in your yard, but which ones you've had the most success with locally and which ones fit your soil and your climate. Um, that, that's huge. We can't under, underestimate the value of that. In fact, we have a webinar coming up soon that'll be specifically featuring our vegetated solutions. Um, Mark, great job. Thank you for that. I, I'm going to hand the controls over to Tim. And Tim, I already sent you a request to take controls. I'm going to give your bio while you click on that little thing on your screen and you'll start taking control Which here in a minute. Tim Lancaster. Tim Lancaster, um, we've known him for a lot of years. He's been a good friend and partner of ours for quite some time. He's been involved in the erosion control industry for over 30 years. After graduating from Purdue University in 1988, wow, <laughs> with a bachelor's degree in natural resource and environmental science, Tim worked for North American Green, and you heard Mark mention them, uh, in various erosion technology, product development, and managerial roles until 2017. And during his time with North American Green, Tim invented and further developed the company's line of VMAX composite turf reinforcement mats that Mark introduced you to. And from 2004 to 2014, Tim was the chairman of the Erosion Control Technology Council. We call them ECTC, uh, an in industry organization that develops and promotes standards and guidelines for various types of commercially available erosion control products. And since 2017, this is exciting, Tim's been inventing, developing, and launching a new line of simulated turf erosion control products with improved erosion protection capabilities. And I love seeing him at conferences because he has um, samples of his product laid out on the floor and you can walk on them. It's super cool and way better than any of the uh, convention center floors we walk on. And so now Tim's the vice president of sales for Grassworks LLC. And he's also, he is the manufacturer and the inventor and the big chief decision maker for these uh, innovative new products. And Grassworks LLC also offers leading brands and products for transportation industry, acoustical sound reduction, poultry producers, agriculture, recreational products, and pet care. The company continues to operate out of its Westport facility located in St. Louis, Missouri, USA. So Tim, my screen says it's still waiting for you to click on your screen and take control of this presentation. Thank you, Bill. Uh, thank you for the introduction. And what button am I clicking on? Well, you use your mouse and you just click right in the center of the screen and you'll be driving. You are now in control, buddy. That's your slide and it is all yours. I'm going to mute myself unless you need me. Nope. I appreciate it, Bill. Thanks, Tim. And uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, that was a great introduction by Bill. I'm Tim Lancaster. I'm with Grassworks InstaTurf. And Grassworks is a St. Louis-based company. Uh, we've been making uh, AstroTurf-based products in the St. Louis area for over 30 years. Now, I've been with uh, Grassworks for about two years now. And before that, as Bill mentioned, I was with North American Green for 28 years. 
And when I left North American Green about three years ago, um, I started thinking about ways to improve the uh, existing uh, erosion control product technology that was out there. And one of the issues that we sometimes had with our permanent turf reinforcement mat type products, uh, some of which Mark just covered, was that those products, until they become fully vegetated, just didn't provide a real high level of erosion protection. You should be able to click with your arrows or there's some controls down at the bottom left um, that'll be zoom yeah, controls, either one. I just tried my arrows and I- There you go. You got it, buddy. There you go. So one of the, uh, the issues with the TRMs, the conventional TRM type products was, you know, they just don't have a real high level of erosion resistance until they become well vegetated. And most of the conventional TRMs on the market uh, have a permissible shear stress rating without vegetation anywhere from two to four pounds per square foot. Now, once those products become well vegetated, that number jumps up to 12 pounds and, and uh, some manufacturers even go up to 14 and 16 pounds. So we all know that vegetation establishment uh, can be tricky sometimes. And sometimes it takes uh, quite a while to get a good stand of vegetation establish. Uh, sometimes it can be a, a year or longer before you get mature vegetation and really good uh, root system development. Other hand, rock and concrete, as soon as they're installed, as soon as the concrete's set, uh, they're basically at their maximum uh, level of, uh, of performance in terms of erosion protection. So I started thinking about ways to improve the immediate erosion protection that these types of products can provide. Uh, something else that uh, another issue that kind of exacerbates this whole, whole uh, issue is the fact in, in climate change. So, you know, climate change is here and, you know, it seems like we're getting 100 year storm events about every two weeks now. And what that does is basically increase the odds for a major storm event to occur uh, before you get uh, good vegetation establishment in some of the applications where these products are used. So that brings me to the InstaTurf products. And these products were launched, uh, I guess formally launched in February of 2019. So the products have been on the market for almost a year and a half now. Uh, we refer to these products uh, not as turf reinforcement mats, but uh, we now call them hybrid turf instant armor mats. And these products are really the first soft armor type mats which provide immediate erosion protection equivalent to very large rock riprap. Uh, they have uh, three to four times the unvegetated permissible shear stress ratings of your conventional turf reinforcement mats, as well as the high performance turf reinforcement mats. And I think of them as kind of a hybrid vegetative armoring system. And what I mean by that is it's basically simulated turf that protects, establishes, and then permanently reinforces natural vegetation. So when you're putting this stuff down, you're basically putting it over seed and then the natural vegetation develops up through the simulated turf. So there are two products in the InstaTurf product line. Uh, one of them we, we refer to as a, a, an Instant Armor Erosion Protection Mat, and the other is a Scour Control Mat. So the InstaTurf Shear Force 10 is the erosion protection mat. Uh, it comes in roll form like a conventional TRM. And then the Shear Force 12 is the scour control mat, which comes in panel form. So the Shear Force 10 mat, the hybrid turf instant armor mat, uh, give you some idea of how the, the product looks, how it's constructed. Uh, it's it's uh, made of a UV stabilized polyethylene uh, simulated turf structure. It's about an inch thick. 
and on the back or bottom side of that turf is a very lightweight polyester geotextile. And that, that uh, fabric itself took us a long time to develop because we had to find something that was basically open enough and uh, somewhat loosely constructed enough to allow vegetation to emerge through it, but at the same time provide filtration qualities to and properties to basically filter fine soil particles. So this product comes in roll form, as I've mentioned. Uh, the rolls are either three foot or six foot wide, uh, 45 foot long, and the three foot roll Three-foot rolls weigh about 50 pounds, whereas the six-foot rolls weigh 100 pounds. So it's a fairly heavyweight material. It weighs a little over uh, three pounds per square yard. Uh, the product's installed very much like the conventional TRMs. Uh, you're basically seeding first. You're going to anchor the mat over the top, the seed. Uh, typical anchors that are used, uh, I usually start as a minimum an eight-inch wire staple but uh, longer fabric pins or even rebar stakes may be used depending on the soil conditions. And then once the mat vegetates, you can simply just mow right over the top of it. So it's pretty easy to maintain. Now, this seam lock system, this is actually something uh, that we just started adding to the product. And basically what it allows us to do is to form an overlap between adjacent, adjacent rolls that uh, sits fairly flat and unobtrusive. So you can imagine this is like one inch thick turf. And if you try to just overlap the uh, edges of two rolls, you basically get a two inch bump there. So what we've done was built a seam lock system in which basically consists of a one edge of the, one edge of the mat or the roll having no fabric backing in, in from uh, about two inches in from the edge with full turf on top. And that's the, uh, that's the yellow line there or the yellow arrow you see pointing to the edge of that uh, roll to the left. And then a nubbed flat top on the other edge of the roll where the, the turf is basically reduced down to flat nubs. And that's then set about two inches. And that edge has the full fabric backing. So basically when you're rolling two adjacent rolls together, you just roll a full turf edge over the flat edge. So you end up with a fairly flat seam. And then you anchor along that seam to secure it. So once you roll this uh, or uh, form this seam, the picture to the right there um, with the blue arrow uh, that is basically a seam between two rolls, and it's really hard to see uh, with this new seam lock system. So these products, uh, they don't just look like turf, but the real beauty of the product is the way they perform. And uh, basically, there's th three mechanisms at work here. Uh, one is the simulated turf itself. It actually kind of acts as natural turf in that it forms a shear plane, which above the uh, fabric and soil surface. So what it does is basically prevent a lot of that erosive force from actually reaching the uh, fabric and, and soil below it. So it reduces that erosive action on the soil itself. Uh, the geotextile fabric on the back does two things. Uh, one, it basically filters out fine soil particles so it's keeping those soil particles from being uh, pulled out of the mat under high flow. And then another thing we found with the, the polyester fabric is that those fine, um, fine uh, uh, filaments within that fabric actually cling to the soil. They kind of adhere themselves to the soil when they get wet. So it just kind of helps lock the soil in place uh, beneath the mat. So with that, I want to uh, go into the performance testing that we've done on these products. I've got a video here that I think uh, pretty well summarizes our the testing that we've done. So I'm going to hopefully play that for you now and then we'll get back to the slides. Very 
Bill, are we getting sound? So, Tim, you were not able to hear that video or audio, I understand. I could not hear it. I don't know if anyone else had issues. I don't think they could. I'm going to replay it here at the end. So why don't you go ahead and click and uh, okay. click on that screen again. I didn't have you share your audio through your computer, so there's a kind of a trick to it. If you right. click on the screen, you'll be able to start advancing slides again. Okay. And what I'll do is I'll, when you're done with your presentation and I take control back, we'll have a couple minutes left. I will replay that video with audio on my computer. I forgot to have you go through a setting on Zoom to make sure you were sharing your audio. Okay, that's fine. Yeah, we, we had captioned that video anyway, so it's certainly- it's Excellent video, I love it, by the way. So, I, I, and we'll make sure we, when we send, we'll send out a link to that video on YouTube when we respond to everybody with our PDH certificates, and okay. we'll broadcast that out on all of our LinkedIn channels as well. Good deal, great, good deal. So from that testing, and I don't know how much you could pick up from the testing, but that's ASTM D6460, it's large scale channel testing. Uh, those tests were run at a facility called TRI Environmental. Uh, it's down in South Carolina. They do all of the uh, large scale testing on uh, roller roaster products under the Ashton NetPet program. So. They have a lot of experience in running this particular ASTM test. Uh, looking at the results of that test on our product versus some of the other conventional TRMs, as well as a tied concrete block mat. Uh, if you look at this chart here, uh, what you're looking at is soil loss on the uh, Y axis versus shear stress or applied shear stress at different levels on the x-axis. And the three graph lines you see to the left there, uh, the purple line that you see is a triple net coconut fiber TRM. The uh, orange line is a double net polyfiber turf reinforcement mat. And then the light blue line is a three-dimensional uh, woven high-performance turf reinforcement mat. Uh, one thing you'll notice about all three of those products in terms of performance is they're all about the same. 
So all three of those products are at or approaching uh, the half inch failure point somewhere between two and three pounds per square foot of shear stress. So if you move to the right there, the yellow line is a tied concrete block mat. And then the green line is, a, is the Shear Force 10 instant armor mat. And you can see the Shear Force 10 product uh, basically ran neck to neck with the tied concrete block mat in terms of controlling erosion, controlling soil loss at uh, various shear levels all the way up to the uh, maximum shear level we tested at uh, between 11 and 12 pounds per square foot. Now, with the tight concrete block mat, when they ran the ASTM testing on that product, um, they actually ran that, I think, up to around 17 pounds per square foot, whereas we only went up to 11, between 11 and 12, and the reason for that is the test facility ran out of flow. Uh, they didn't have enough discharge to generate uh, any more shear stress and velocity than than uh, we did at the very end of our test. And we never actually reached failure between 11 and 12 pounds. So between that 11 and 12 pound mark, we'd only lost about 0.2 inches on average of soil from the Shear Force 10 product, whereas the failure point is a half inch. But and from a design standpoint, uh, we basically publish a maximum permissible shear for the product at 12 pounds. So we also say this product gives you basically uh, the performance of reinforced turf from day one. And what we mean by that, I think uh, you can see in this, this uh, chart here, once again, we're looking at cumulative soil loss versus applied shear stress. And the top three lines you see there, those are the, the uh, turf reinforcement mats I just showed you in the previous slide, which were unvegetated. In this slide, they're fully vegetated. So this is their performance with uh, approximately 12 months of vegetation growth. The green line is the Shear Force 10 Instant Armor Mat unvegetated. And you can see the, the uh, Shear Force 10 product actually outperformed uh, these other turf reinforcement mats in their fully vegetated state. So from a permissible shear rating and comparing the permissible shear stresses of uh, kind of the, the turf reinforcement mat type products or soft armor products uh, versus rock riprap. In this chart, uh, you'll see permissible shears for conventional TRMs, unvegetated over to the left there, uh, between two pounds and four pounds per square foot. I would say on average, most of those products uh, come in around three pounds per square foot. Uh, once they vegetate, uh, that number jumps up to 12 pounds per square foot. And for some products that goes up to, from 14 up to a maximum of about 16 uh, pounds per square foot. With the Shear Force 10 Instant Armor Mat, unvegetated, we actually start you out at 12 pounds per square foot. And then once the mat vegetates, we publish a, permi or a, a maximum permissible shear of 16 pounds per square foot. You compare that with a 24 inch rock grip wrap, a 30 inch rock grip wrap, we're, we're right on par with a 30 inch rock grip wrap in terms of uh, erosion control performance from day one. So typical applications for the product, uh, very similar to other uh, or the uh, conventional TRMs, only uh, in more severe applications, you know, high flow channels, uh, very steep slopes with a lot of runoff coming from the top, uh, outfall areas, down shoots, uh, pond and lake shorelines, stream banks, river banks. Uh, one application is really good for it, over winter protection. Say if you have to protect a, a, a channel through the winter months and you get your seed down late in the fall and you know you're not going to get good vegetation growth in there till the following spring. Uh, this, pro this product gives you really good protection uh, through the winter months and tell you what anymore our winter months at least in this area we've had hardly any any uh, snow but uh, seems like we just get 
pounded by rain through the winter anymore. So uh, this product give you really good protection against that. Uh, also in areas where vegetation establishment might just be slow for some reason. Uh, arid climates, uh, shady areas, uh, wet soils or poor, poor soil conditions can all uh, interfere and, and uh, inhibit good vegetation establishment. And so, we're finding more and more sites, if you don't mind me jumping in with you, where even if a contractor tries to save back black dirt, uh, there's often some, you know, what we would call dead soil, you know, not much organic matter or really high pH or real salty soil on site sometimes. So even if they think they could grow grass, a lot of times they can't, not as well as they hope. Now, if that's a good point, in a lot of construction sites, um, yeah, they're supposed to, you know, stockpile the topsoil and, and reapply it, but um, I don't know what happens to that topsoil a lot of times, but uh, many times it's just the subsoil you're working with. So it's not very fertile and it takes a long time to build fertility back into the soil where you get uh, good vegetation growth. So good comment, Bill. So this was a trial application for the product that we did on a Peabody coal mine site. And this is actually a mine site uh, about 30 miles north of Evansville, Indiana, which is where I live. So I was able to kind of keep an eye on this job, but the, uh, the coal mine was interested in looking at the Shear Force 10 <clears throat> as a substitute uh, for a lot of the rock riprap they, that they use on uh, various applications on their mines. And this was a kind of a standard channel lining application. Uh, if you look off to the right in the pictures, uh, that's a really large overburden cap. And this channel ran right along the perimeter of the cap to drain the cap. And the channel itself is on a gradient that ranges anywhere from, I'd say, 3% uh, at the top all the way down to about 8% near the bottom. So it's a fairly steep channel and it uh, carries a lot of water, as you'll see here in a minute. So we did a little test section for them with the Shear Force 10 product installed. And when we did the installation, we basically left a, a, a control section at the tail end of the, the uh, Shear Force 10 section, and then one upstream from the Shear Force 10 section, as you see in the, the right hand photo. And you also see several rock check dams there uh, along the, uh, the channel bed that uh, you know, you'll see in here in a minute how they perform. But so we left these control sections there. The, the control sections were simply seeded in straw mulch. So they didn't have any Shear Force 10 on them. And we just uh, basically left them with very little protection to see what would happen. This is a Shear Force 10 product uh, right after installation, looking downstream. Uh, the installation actually took place on September 10th of 2019. And I went out there about a month after installation. We had had uh, hardly any rainfall in uh, September and early October. So I didn't really expect to see much, and I didn't. Uh, there were a few seedlings popped up through the mat, but for the most part, the thing was just completely unvegetated at this point. But how things normally happen anymore, two weeks after that last picture was taken is when the deluge started. And October 21st, we had a little over an inch and a half of rainfall in a 24 hour period. Then a week after that, we had over two inches of rainfall in a two hour period or 24 hour period. So we just got slammed by rain there uh, late in October. And I think uh, the total rainfall in October was about six and a half inches last year in this area. So it's got a lot of rainfall for that particular month. So I went out to the job site on November 20th and I didn't know what really to expect to see because I really didn't think about how much rain we had had. Uh, it seemed like a lot of the rain that we'd had came at night and uh, while I was sleeping, didn't really think about how, how, how much it rained, how hard it had rained. So I went out there on November 20th and the first thing I saw was a picture to the left and it, these huge gullies had washed in the overburden cap. And uh, there were several of these, which uh, they have since filled. 
But uh, when I saw that, I thought, oh, this site seen a lot of rainfall. And the center picture there, that's uh, the channel just upstream from our test section. And a little riprap check dam there, you see just started to, to deteriorate. Some of the rock is washed out of it. And a lot of straw mulch had, had washed into that rock itself. And then you can start to see some gully action uh, just downstream from that. And the picture to the right is uh, below a rock check dam, which was below our test section. And you can start to see some, some um, I guess, small gully form there where um, the water had come through. So I knew the side had taken on a lot of rain uh, since we'd done the installation. I got to our test section and I was very relieved to see this. And it was basically a, a green rectangle in the middle of all this brown eroded soil. So it was very, it was kind of surreal. It was just like, it, it almost looked out of place because it looked too good. So the mat, uh, Shear Force 10 mat, right after installation looking upstream on September 10th, it's on a, the picture to the left. And then the picture to the right is on November 20th. And you can see pretty good vegetation growth through the mat at that point. So one thing we didn't do here was use enough of the mat. So when we installed the mat in this channel, we thought we kind of had the, the wetted perimeter of the channel sufficiently covered you know, with the expected amount of flow. Uh, we were quite wrong. And we didn't put enough, uh, didn't actually go wide enough in the right side slope of this channel it was fairly gradual side slope but it basically just scoured out and you can see along the edge there there's like a uh, a ledge if you will and that's where the shear force 10 mat protection stops and it's just a, a sheer ledge and uh, right next to that is a goalie and at this point uh, in November, that goalie was about eight inches deep and anywhere from two to three feet wide. So it had washed uh, pretty substantially. It's another picture looking upstream, and this is standing uh, just below the control section downstream from the, the, uh, the test section. And you can see that scour hole there in the middle. Um, from the water coming off of our test section. That scour holes uh, at this point anywhere from 24 to 30 inches deep. And then off to the left is that uh, goalie I just showed you uh, where we had uh, stopped the uh, installation of the mat. So just another look at it. Uh, left side of the screen, that's our test section. In the center is the control section. And then there's the rock riprap check dam just down below that. And those rocks are fairly large in diameter, I would say 12 to 24 inches. And you can see a lot of that rock is already starting to, to blow out, basically wash down into the gully that formed below the check dam. Those are some incredible pictures, Tim. I'm chiming in only for the sake of time. We're at 123. We'll cut off sh sharply at 130, but um, these are incredible pictures. You're doing great. I just want to leave a little bit of time at the end to encourage people to get a hold of us for lunch and learns and to answer a couple questions. Yeah, I'll, I'll speed it up. So I went back out to the site in May, and um, on May 1, they had come in and filled that goalie next to the test section. That's a picture to the left, a yellow arrow pointing to that area. And by the end of May, I went back out there and we had, had enough rain in May to where all that infill soil had washed right back out of that gully. And the gully itself, uh, there actually started to fill a little bit with rock from the check dam upstream of the test section. And then the, the uh, rock riprap check dam just down below the test section at that point, it just pretty much leveled. So there was enough flow in May to, to basically uh, wash that, that uh, goalie out as well as uh, you know, provide or, or uh, exert more damage to that riprap check dam just below our test section. 
And then this end of May is good vegetation growth growing up through the mat. So just to recap, the SureForce 10 product, it gives you a much higher level of protection before vegetation establishment. And basically that gives, that means less worry in terms of how quickly vegetation will establish on your job sites. Uh, it gives you rock-like erosion protection from day one and typically, typically costs less than half that of installed rock riprap. Uh, it's more attractive, lower cost than concrete based products. And as soon as it's installed, it looks like vegetation. So in some applications, uh, you know, especially commercial developments, residential developments, uh, that can be a real benefit. And then once it vegetates, you can simply mow over the top of the product. The scour mat, the difference between the 10, the SureForce 10 and SureForce 12 product is with a scour mat, we add a half inch rubber core. Uh, the rubber core has inch and a half holes in it to allow vegetation to grow up through it. Uh, this comes in a three foot by four foot panel. They weigh about 30 pounds a piece. They're real easy to handle. And with this product, it's an all-in-one scour mat. So other scour slash transition mats on the market require a, an underlay for immediate erosion protection. Uh, typically a turf reinforcement mat or sod is put down first. And then the transition mats placed on top of that. Uh, with the SureForce 12 product, you don't need the underlay. So the product is basically applied directly upon the seed, seed bed, anchored in place, grass grows up through it. Uh, you anchor it with a 12 inch wire staples, rebar stakes, and sometimes earth anchors, depending on the soil conditions. Uh, like the SureForce 10 product, you can also mow uh, right over the top of the 12. And this product provides a very high level of erosion protection as soon as you put it down. Uh, basically permissible shear stress on this material without vegetation is 14 pounds per square foot in cohesive soil conditions, which is equivalent to a 36 inch rock riprap. Testing on the product uh, performed very well versus some of the other materials out there. The purple line is another transition mat, uh, rubber scour transition mat. Uh, with a TRM underlay, got a failure point at eight pounds per square foot. Uh, the yellow line, once again, is a tight concrete block mat, and the green line is a Shear Force 12. And you can see the 12 actually outperformed the the tight concrete block mat up to the point where we we uh, finished our testing on the the uh, Shear Force 12. Typical applications: culvert and pipe outfall, air outfall areas. Uh, areas where there's a lot of turbulence in the flow or expected turbulence in the flow. Uh, one of the applications that uh, we're seeing more of is for downspout protection on like commercial buildings as well as residential or residential uh, buildings with some of the pictures you see there to the right. And Tim, I'm going to offer, since that video didn't play audio, if you can, since we're at the 130 and a lot of people are going to jump off, I've got to give instructions on how to get their PDH certificate. Okay. And then I can play your video and, and let you wrap up here after I do that, after I get to my slides. Do you mind if I take over real quick and get to those slides? Yep, that's fine. Okay. And I, I hate to do that to you, but um, we've always been real good about the sake of time here. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm, you stay with us if you would, because um, we've got some important stuff. I'm getting to Tim's contact info, and this is all going to be recorded. That's part of what I want to say here, folks. So for those of you that have to jump off right at 1.30 that have, I've gotten some messages, you have other commitments. I'm going to go back and let Tim wrap up. We'll go a little bit beyond the 1.30. But to get your PDA certificate, check your email, and it'll come from Don Tiemann or ASP and, uh, or Quick Supply Bowman, and it'll have a Survey Monkey on there with a link, and it'll tell you how easy it is to get your PDA certificate. We do have other um, webinars coming up June 24th with AquaBlock, July 8th with uh, our Vegetative Solutions, Tom Bowman, our in-house guy at Bowman Construction Supply, and uh, Rocky Mountain Bioproducts will do that one. So here we are up against 130. Check out our website or follow us on LinkedIn for more information. I'm gonna go back to Tim's slides, but folks, we want you to schedule lunch and learns. And if you're not back in the office and ready for visitors, we'll do a lounge and learn. Um, Tim can be on live and he can do a full blown presentation where we can have you guys unmuted and you can just interact with him. And we're looking forward to setting up as many of those as we can in our quick supply, ASB enterprises and Bowman construction supply markets. 
and we work very closely with Tim. And we'll keep doing that. So please get a hold of us, and we'll set that up, right, Tim? Yes. Let me go back to the slides that you were on and let people jump off at 1.30 that have to. And you were on this one right here. And yeah. I'm going to hand you controls again. If you'll click on your screen, Tim, you'll be able to finish up. And you're driving, I believe. If you want to get back to where you were at with Shear Force 12. All right. So this is a culvert outfall application for the product. Uh, picture to the left. Let's take a right at installation. And picture in the center was taken about 30 days afterward. You can see some of the vegetation starting to emerge up through the uh, scour mat. And then the picture to the right was taken the following spring. At, at that point, uh, the mat was pretty much covered with vegetation. You couldn't hardly even see the uh, mat beneath. Uh, one of the applications I think is really good for this type of product are these curb cuts. Yeah, I know in the St. Louis area and a lot of areas I go into, it seems like the standard of practice for curb cuts is to simply dump a pile of rock at the end of the concrete. And what happens normally is what you see in the picture to the left is that eventually the water finds its way around the rock and you start getting erosion around the rock. And this thing just becomes a, a, a maintenance nightmare for a guy that has to go out there and, and uh, manage the vegetation growing around the, the rock or within the rock itself. Uh, the Shear Force 12 product, uh, with that product, you use a panel or two right at the end of the concrete, uh, secure that area, vegetate it, and then the uh, maintenance folks can just go out and mow right over the top of it. So wrapping up the 12, this product, you don't need an additional underlay, TRM or sod. And what that does, basically save you time and money in the installation. Uh, gives you higher permissible shear stress ratings and other scour transition mats uh, before vegetation development and establishment. It's a very flexible product, so it's real easy to, to install and get the product to conform to the underlying soil when you're installing it. And you don't need heavy equipment to transport it and place it. And that really results in lower installation costs than say tied concrete block mats or articulated concrete blocks or, or uh, rock riprap. And with this product, you also get that vegetated look uh, from day one and it's mobile. So it's fairly easy to maintain from, from a, uh, in the long term. And then all of our, our uh, design recommendations, design guidelines, installation guidelines in both CAD and uh, PDF formats, uh, case studies, and anything and everything you need to know in effectively designing with and installing these products is on our website. And a web address is at the top of your screen there, www.insta-turf.com. So it's a great resource for you, as well as the uh, ASP uh, Quick Supply and Bowman websites. And if you want more information, like to talk to me, my contact information is here. Uh, if you'd like to schedule an in-house lunch and learn, I'd be glad to do that with you directly as well. Uh, typically when I do those, it's, it's uh, in conjunction with a distributor such as ASB or Bowman or Quick, depending on where you're located. And uh, that's it. I want to thank everyone for their time today. And I'm sorry I might have ran over, ran through my time a little bit, but I appreciate well, it. It's probably you. because you're used to doing a full-blown presentation all by yourself, right? <laughs> uh, yes. <laughs> Well, and I chimed in a couple of times, so I take the blame, but thanks for doing that, Tim. I, um, I will try to pull up that video and see if I can do it. We had 60 some people stay on and we had a couple of questions. Mark, if you're still on there, even though we we're a little long, while I'm looking to set, set up my sound, do you want to um, answer the question that was asked about your pictures, Mark? Are you, are you on there with us still, Mark? I am. So there's yeah. a question about, uh, in some of the photos, like uh, rock toe protection, maybe on one of them. And I can, the C350 photo that I shared, it was a slope protected with C350 TRM and at the bottom, the toe protection was riprap. That whole slope was built on a giant footing, like three foot thick rock section burrito wrapped with high strength geotextile. And uh, it wouldn't have vegetated because of all the massive amount of rock. 
So we use rock toe protection at the bottom. And then also because of the water level, a lot of TRMs, the ones that I talked about, not necessarily the Tim stuff with the hybrid turf, but they require vegetation to work. You're not getting very much value for your money without the vegetation. So um, if it's in a water level, like even on a lake edge where it's below water, where grass and vegetation won't grow through it, it's you're not getting much bang for the buck. So a lot of times we use multiple solutions like use rock to protect, you know, the bottom two foot and then TRM above it. Um, it's really um, using multiple tools to fix a problem. And in that one kind of windy creek, uh, it just made the designer feel more comfortable that on this 90 degree turn where water was coming in at an extreme velocity that it would hit a uh, rock section, dissipate energy, and then transition into turf reinforcement mat. So it was multiple products at the same time. There's another question about how um, Shearforce 12 compares price-wise to Fleximat. And I would say they're pretty comparable. Shearforce 12 might be a little bit more, but um, it's also really difficult to get Fleximat in like a four by four piece or small pieces. Like if we don't buy over certain square footage, we actually get charged an upcharge on Fleximat because it's meant to be bought in like a five foot, six foot, 10 foot wide roll. Um, not for those curb cuts like Tim mentioned or something like that. And then also just the aesthetic value of Shear Force 12 versus Fleximat is uh, worth some value there. So I, I would say they're pretty comparable with Shear Force 12 maybe being a, a slight bit higher. And, and quite a bit lighter weight, right, Tim? Extremely easier to install, that's for sure. And I will say, depending on the application, the Shear Force 10 product could probably be used in place of Fleximat yeah. uh, in, in some of the channel lining applications because before these products came about, uh, you basically had your conventional TRMs and a Fleximat. There really wasn't anything in between there uh, to fill that gap. And of course, that's one reason why we did it because there was a, a large gap there and, and uh, jump in performance from conventional TRMs all the way up to Fleximat. So. And Tim, my mm -hmm. screen is white. Everybody's seen a white screen and that doesn't mean I went away. I'm getting ready to play that video unless you don't see enough value in it that we've already shown it. Um, we still have you know, 50 some participants on here. I could play your video with audio if you'd like. Oh, that's fine. Yeah, no, that'd be great. Let that's me know fine. if you hear it, guys. You can text me. You won't be able to talk over it because it should be loud. Storms are getting stronger and floods more frequent. Can your project really afford to wait on vegetation establishment for effective erosion protection? Grassworks introduces the revolutionary InstaTurf High Flow Erosion Control products, the first and only soft armor turf reinforcement mats, which provide the same level of erosion protection as large rock riprap and concrete blocks from day one of installation. InstaTurf products make it possible to use vegetation for protecting high flow channels, river banks, shorelines, and levees without worrying about that big storm hitting before the vegetation becomes well established. So just how much flow can InstaTurf products handle? InstaTurf's erosion control turf reinforcement mats were put through intense ASTM D6460 large channel testing performed at TRI Environmental's Denver Downs Research Facility to determine their unvegetated effectiveness from day one of installation. Each product was installed in three separate 20% gradient, two foot wide channel flumes on loam soils and immediately subjected to four consecutive half hour flow events maximum flow discharges of up to 50 cubic feet per second and generating average shear forces well over 10 pounds per square foot and flow velocities exceeding 20 feet per second. These extreme test levels are typically reserved for fully vegetated TRMs, rock riprap and concrete blocks. 
Soil loss measurements were taken throughout the test. Total cumulative soil loss was averaged and gauged against the ASTM D6460 cumulative soil loss failure criteria of one half inch. Unvegetated shear force 10 and shear force 12 passed the test with room to spare with average total cumulative soil loss of only 0.1 to 0.2 inches. Both unvegetated shear force products withstood the maximum attainable flow discharge, outperforming other previously tested fully vegetated TRMs, InstaTurf shear force products, the performance of reinforced turf from day one. You no longer need to wait for vegetation in order to attain maximum high performance erosion protection from a TRM. How about that, Tim? Was that better? Perfect. Yeah, thank you. Okay, great. Well, Tim and Mark, we answered all the Q&A questions, and we're up at 140, and that's 10 minutes more than we thought. Thanks to all the people that stayed on. We've still got 45 participants on there. Uh, gentlemen, I thank you both, Tim Lancaster, Mark Sterneman, and attendees, just reach out to your local ASP Enterprise, Quick Supply Company, Bowman Construction Supply rep, or Tim Lancaster, or me, myself, Bill Murphy. We thank you for joining us, and we look forward to you joining us again in a couple of weeks. Gentlemen, thank you both.